people. Welcome into today's episode. This is Sarah and John. We're going to be speaking about how you can find your way in the hospitality industry in this episode. This is for people who maybe are looking for a first time job in hospitality or who are looking to enter hospitality for the first time. We're going to be speaking about how you can find your job in hospitality, even without experience and a little bit about the pay opportunities which can lead to working and living abroad, as well as some perks and opportunities that come from working in hospitality. How did you end up getting into hospitality, Sarah? Yes, I would suppose that personal training is hospitality as well, because the definition of hospitality is providing a service. I was 16 when I was super interested in fitness And that's about all I was interested in, to be honest, fitness. So I went into personal training school, studied sport and leisure management and became a personal trainer. Really loved it, done that for a couple of years, four years in total. And I decided, oh gosh, I'm really starting to build up clients, but I also want to travel. So the best time to probably do this after speaking to many people, especially who are 10 years ahead of me in life said, if you don't do this now, you may never do it. And so off I went to one friend around Europe and came back with literally no money and decided I would like to travel more, but it's a little difficult to travel without being able to work. And I thought hospitality is probably the easiest way to be able to find jobs abroad. And you can be abroad and the next day you can have a job in hospitality. So I thought might as well, number one, make some money quickly in hospitality so I can go overseas and have money behind me and then I can find opportunities abroad. So I was applying for places in Dublin to work. I wanted to save 5,000 so I could enter Australia. That was my next step on travel. And as I was applying for many jobs, I guess I accidentally applied for Workaway International at the time, which was recruiting people in Dublin and sending them to Florida to work in hospitality. And I got a call for an interview and I thought, you know what? I wanted to go to Australia because it's sunny and speaks English. Florida is the same thing. So let's go to Florida. Everything came in together, got into the hospitality industry, actually got offered a job in the fitness center. There was only a handful of jobs in the fitness centers in the country clubs and yeah. got one of those throughout time, then transferred into working more in the restaurants, into the bar and to that area as well. Yeah. Cool. Interesting, I suppose, for myself, I was in school and definitely wasn't academically minded and had no real interest in studying. My poor parents were constantly trying to keep pushing and at least get me through a leave insert. At the time, my dad being an army man, I was going to go down the army route, but very much was more the air corps side of it. Uh, but I ended up finding out I was too tall for a cockpit. So plan B was the hospitality industry. I was already working in the local hotel and enjoying it and liked it. And so I went and did my hotel management training in a hotel here in Ireland and then graduated after four years and went to Paris for a year, running a couple of bars and restaurants over there, then got lucky, uh, bumped into a guy who was looking for a GM for a new startup in Chicago, went over there and the right opportunities kept finding me at the right time. I moved from Chicago to the Caribbean, back to Ireland, to Europe, back to the States, back to the Turks and Caicos Islands, back to Ireland, back to the States. Um, I had a great 12, 15 years moving around the world, meeting loads of really good people who a lot of them are still really great friends and a lot of great contacts and connections. Um, it's amazing how many people, even over all those years, setting up the various bars and restaurants and golf resorts were only coming for a part-time job while they were going through college to have a bit of money. Two years later, all of a sudden, they're graduated from college and they're like, I'm really enjoying this and I'm making way more money doing this than I ever would doing what I studied in college. I think I might just stay doing what I'm doing and stay working in hospitality. And a bit like yourself, then they're like, and I can travel the world. Um, And it's the one thing I always say to young people and definitely even my own two nieces as they were coming up through even transition year. I was always like, get a local job in your local bar, restaurant, hotel, pub, coffee shop. It doesn't really matter where it is. Learn the basics of waiting on a customer, clearing and resetting tables, serving drinks, prepping food, whatever you enjoy or you gravitate towards because it'll stand to you for the rest of your days. And there's so many skills that you learn in hospitality that you can transfer into like pretty much any industry in the world. 
Um, but I think the biggest perk is you can travel the world. Like there's so much to the hospitality industry nowadays and there's so much I'm more aware of now than I was when I even graduated hotel management. Um, and I don't know what it was like for you. You was doing, as you said, fitness and then it was like hospitality is fitness and it allows me to travel. I was always very much like I'm going down the road to training to be a GM of a hotel, but I didn't know country clubs existed. I was aware of cruise lines because you hear about it, but man, if I'd have known about country clubs, I'd have been all day long going down the country club roof. It's, I think it's such a unique part of the hospitality industry where if you're somebody who I can give genuinely really has that passion to want to make a difference, to want to be part of a team, to want to really, really get to deliver a unique experience for your guests and get to know them. The country clubs provides that to you because you're dealing with the same people day in and day out. Uh, as opposed to, I think all the other ends of it, like even airlines as hospitality, fitness, gyms, cruise bars, restaurants, hotels, branded, non-branded. It's very transient. You don't really get to really know the locals and make a good connection with them as much as you do in the country clubs. It always amazes me at times as well how so many people seem to think they have to go down this road of college and um, getting a degree and then there's like they don't really know where they want to go next but they want to travel and so you didn't have to go to college to get to travel the world you could have gone to your local pub walked in the door or your local coffee shop or hotel and said I've, well, i want to work like i don't have any experience i don't even have a resume but i'm local i'm hungry like, what have you got from me? I guarantee you, there is no hotel bar or restaurant in the world wouldn't say, fine, come in on such a day at such a time and let's see what happens. And, and that, for me, I think is probably one of the real advantages of the hospitality industry is if you genuinely want to, you can have a job in the morning. Um, and I'm always amazed at the amount of people who apply to us um, to go to work in the States with our country club partners. And they tell me how passionate they are about the hospitality industry and how they really want a job and i'm like so where are you working at the moment and they're like oh i'm not and i'm like i know every hotel bar restaurant in this country in ireland is screaming out for staff likewise all over the world if you really are excited and passionate and you really want a job in the hospitality industry you can have one this evening you can have one tomorrow morning is it more you just want to go to the sun in florida and travel or do you really want to work in the hospitality industry yes I know it's a question a lot of people have is how can they get their first job in hospitality, which I know you've touched on a lot of those points that it really is simple. And I think a couple of other ways to get in the door is if you are in transition year, which is in Ireland when you're approximately 16 years old, it's almost like a different year in school where it's not a strict curriculum. There is more emphasis on activities and getting out and doing work experience i guess more the artsy side of the world more than the academic is focused on that year and that's a great opportunity to get your first job through doing experience through asking a company if you can work with them for a week and you don't even have to be in transition year to do that if you are nervous about going and working in hospitality and wondering if you can do it or not you can always ask can you um, shadow for a week? Can you work there for a week? A lot of um, companies are willing to take you on that way as well. Yeah. Or volunteer like, another way to get in. And like, I sometimes, I feel I come across as if I'm bashing the Irish hospitality industry and it's never, it's not ever what I want. It's almost trying to urge them to maybe make change, but huge kudos to I think a lot of the organizations in Ireland getting together recently um, and the launch of career portals that IE has been a fantastic portal that was set up to give anybody who's interested in either hiring people for transition year or transition year people who just want an experience working in an industry to see what it's all about to see whether it's what they want to do or not before they even get to trying to figure out okay, what do I really want to study in Leave and Search or what do I really want to potentially put down on CA forms? They get to go to careerportal.ie, log in, have a look around, have a sample of some other different jobs, go pick one. There's a lot from the local areas and get that experience. Yeah, I, I just think sometimes 
people overlook how simple it is to get a job in hospitality. And I push back and constantly try and suggest to people, like, just walk in the front door like I would have done when I went looking for a job at 15 to any of the local hotels, bars and restaurants. I didn't have a resume. I had no experience. And asked for a job. So, and the majority go, yeah, cool. Come in on Saturday. I started on the Saturday and I met the owner and he said, just come in jeans and a shirt or a white shirt it was. And I was brought across the street into another yard that opened up and it was where they dumped all the glass bottles all week long. And I spent my Saturdays sitting on an empty Coke crate, sorting out bottles to be returned to go back to the suppliers. And I think I did that for six months before I even came in to start clearing the floor or stocking shelves. So there's definitely lots of jobs available. I just feel sometimes people don't really want to put in the hard graft for a job. They almost want the more higher end fancy job as opposed to being willing to take a job and start at the bottom and then work your way up from there. Yes, I think fear can hold a lot of people back as well and their own beliefs of them not being able to do it. I know especially I hear a lot of people are nervous that maybe if I go to a restaurant they won't be able to carry a tray or balance a tray or what if I drop drinks or what if I forget the menu or if I don't know what I'm going to say to people and I would say they're totally normal um, fears to have but the only way to get through them is to go ahead and take the job and like any job there's going to be fears of what you can do if you're going to go into personal training you may have fears of am i going to be able to teach this class am i going to be able to remember whether you're going into finance and whatever fears come with that i'm not too sure but for every job there um, will be fears and i'd say the only way to get through that is to just take the job and just fake it till you make it show up and try your best and everything that you need to learn the great thing about hospitality is it, it you are able to learn on the job as you get the job in the first couple of weeks of getting the job. You can really learn um, a lot and definitely enough to perform your job with, to a good ability as well. Um, yeah, it's a great piece of advice there. You're not supposed to know how to carry a tray if you've never carried a tray. You're not supposed to know how to make a coffee if you've never made a coffee. You're supposed to arrive and have whoever's hired you actually have a training plan and an orientation and an induction in place to walk you through how to do all of these things. Um, I remember being over in Chicago on one of my first GM um, roles and going to an opening of a brand new uh, restaurant called Bahama Breeze. They were a big California chain who were opening up in uh, Chicago. And I remember people saying, you have to come in on a Thursday evening. It's hysterical to watch. And I was like, what was on? And they were saying, Thursday is when the new hires are introduced to everyone. If you were starting, you would arrive and meet the owner and the GM, and they would bring you into the middle of the restaurant and give you one of their plates and tell you to drop it on the floor and break it. You weren't allowed to sit back down with your family to enjoy the meal that they brought you in the house until you literally broke the plate on the floor. And then they would say to you, okay, now that you've got that out of your system, you should never be afraid or worried about breaking something here. It's going to happen. You're in the hospitality industry. We break stuff all the time. But we're hopefully going to try and teach you how not to do it. Yes. You know, that's interesting. There's actually a Bahama Breeze just around the corner from me. So, uh, they used to do great cocktail shows as well on one of the nights. It was like cocktail hour. And the bartenders would almost do the old Tom Cruise piece from the movie cocktail. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. yeah. So I know a lot of you touch a little bit on transferable skills that you can gain in hospitality industry. What are some of those transferable skills you think that people can get out of hospitality that they can apply to other job roles or apply to progress in their career or even just their personal life as well? Yeah. One of the biggest things you learn in hospitality is how to deal with people. Um, that's going to stand you in your personal life because your relationships aren't always going to be great. There's going to be times where you've done something wrong or somebody's done something to annoy or upset you. Uh, it's the exact same as a guest when they're in your bar, restaurant, pub, hotel, wherever it is that you're working, it's not always going to go well. Things are going to go wrong. You're going to upset guests. Guests are going to come in already upset and they're going to take out the frustrations on you. And I think when you work in the hospitality environment for long enough, you 
start to learn really well how to read people. You can spot that person looks a little bit like they're about to just lose it. So I better put on my kid gloves and make sure that I'm there to get their order correctly. I'm there to make sure they got the right order. Don't get the order wrong. Don't drop in the wrong drink. Remember, he said no onions on the burger. Don't put onions because all you're doing is inviting a whole war to your world. So I definitely think that's probably, for me, the biggest skill I think you learn in hospitality is how to recognize people's different emotional states, how to deal with them. We have a whole piece in one of our training programs, and it's all about the guest and identifying all the different types of guests and how to engage and interact with those guests. And they are all different. The guy who comes in his own, which is typically me if I'm working, um, and I've got my laptop with me, I want to get in and get out. Like I'm not there to hang around for an hour and a half long of a, an experience. Two business people are going in. I want to be left alone. Like They're probably having a business meeting or they're brainstorming about something. Like Yes, they want good, good service, but they don't need any chit-chat from you. But a couple are in there and you can see they're sitting back relaxed. Yeah, they're going to want a little bit more talk from you, but they're not really going to want you hanging around like trying to have a conversation with them. So yeah, I, I definitely think... For me, that's probably the biggest skill you will learn in hospitality is how to manage and deal with people and how to recognize and spot the various emotions that are going on throughout the course of the day with a, either a guest, but also with your own team members. Um, like the amount of times you'll be walking through a bar or a restaurant or a kitchen or a hotel and you'll just notice something, you'll spot something, you'll see something that's isn't right. And if, if you're any way focused or really tuned in as to what's happening you'll be able to spot john must be having a good day today i wonder what's going on if you're a good person a good team member you're going to go over and try and see can you figure out what's maybe right or wrong and how can you maybe help or does this person just need to blow off some steam or be left alone or do they need to go home and like i think if you can master that ability to really be able to recognize what's going on around you with the people you're engaging with I think your personal relationships are going to thrive. I think your professional relationships are going to thrive. But I also think it'll give you a lot more real understanding and knowledge about you and who you are as a person as well. And you'll start to spot some traits of your own and you'll start to spot times where you know you just need to check out and go be on your own for 10 minutes, half an hour and have some of your own time. So to me, that's probably the biggest thing you learn in hospitality because as they say, it's people's business and you're dealing with suppliers, you're dealing with account managers, you're dealing with owners, you're dealing with managers, you're dealing with fellow team members, you're dealing with customers. And it's just, it's all the time managing and understanding people. And I don't think of, I can't think of an industry in the world where that isn't beneficial. Yeah, I, I believe it does allow you to become a better guest as well as being better in all relationships, like you mentioned as well. I would say another skill that comes from working in the hospitality industry, especially if you're a um, server, trainer, anywhere that's front of house, would be sales as well. Like learning how to sell an item, learning how to sell your personality, and that can transfer to almost anything in life as well. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Uh, I it, there's always a love-hate relationship with the hospitality industry for everyone. I think even for seasoned veterans in hospitality, they'll have a day a week where they're like, what did I ever do to deserve this? This is just insane. Surely there's better ways of earning a living. But on the whole, if you enjoy people and you enjoy being around people, and you enjoy being able to make a difference to people's day, not always the guest day, sometimes your team member's day, sometimes the vendor, sometimes the supplier. I was out this morning with my fiance, we were just grabbing a quick bit of breakfast in a new place we'd never been before. And just the simplicity of the hot sauce they had on scrambled eggs absolutely blew my mind. I was like, holy smokes. And as we were leaving, I just said to the girl uh, at the tail, I said, Food was fat. That hot sauce was sensational. And she turned and the chef, who's, I'd say, mid-20s, came over and he said, brought me over to the barrel, this whiskey barrel from Keeling's, is where they ferment the hot sauce. And he was explaining to me how to do it. And I, like, he could see for me, I was like, oh, like, I want the recipe. <laughs> he was like, no. But as we were leaving, he came back over and he was like, really appreciate you just 
showing an interest. Mm-hmm. Like it's not often the customer genuinely you can see has enjoyed our experience here. And I was like, and as we walked out the door, I was like, yeah, I think sometimes we probably look for the bad instead of looking for the good in the scenario in hospitality. Um, I know as a guest, even as a guest, it can be very easy to want to document and complain about a negative experience. But knowing that and having working in hospitality, I think it allows you to see the other side and see the hard work that is put in behind the scenes. And yeah. you are a guest out in the world to um, be able to give that positive feedback as well, which maybe isn't given as often as the negative and show that appreciation. I know that can be really well received, like even the experience of, you mentioned the hot sauce and just taking that genuine yeah. interest and opening up that conversation as well. It was interesting and frustrating and a little sad as we started getting back into living our lives after COVID. I remember, God, there must have been, and and I haven't heard of it as much of late. The general opinion seemed to be that the biggest problem now wasn't the staff. It was the customers complaining and moaning and whinging about everything and just beating up on the staff all the time about all the little things they felt that they didn't do right or that they didn't get or that, oh my God, the cost of this or the cost of that. And like, it's sad when the guest becomes the reason that owners are contemplating shutting down their business, not because they can't find staff or because the prices are too high or because rent is too high or because it's just difficult. It's when you hear owners starting to talk about how frustrating it is trying to deal with such a demanding customer nowadays that feels they're so entitled to so much more because they felt they got robbed during the COVID uh, experience. Um, So yeah, definitely, I think people, at the end of the day, everybody who's in the hospitality industry, to me, I look at it as being a person. We're all people. Being I'm a guest, I'm still a person. I've got feelings. I've got stuff going on in my day or my life or my world that sort of impacts how I am on any given day. The people who own the industries, they're people. The suppliers, as I said, bringing in the produce and the materials, they're people. Like the staff member, they're trying to look after their people. Um, and sometimes I think we don't all treat each other with the same level of respect and care that we would want them to treat us with. Um, and it can be disappointing at times as well when you speak to suppliers and they're struggling to try and keep the doors open because they've got so many clients who are trying to figure out how not to pay them for the job they've done. Um, I know it's a big problem in the hospitality industry, like you'll have recruitment agencies fighting against each other to try and fill an exec chef role for a client. And at the end of the day, the client will go and find somebody themselves Mm -hmm. and then not want to actually follow through on the agreement that they might have in place with a recruiter. Uh, Or even if they do, they'll spend six months to a year trying to get them to pay the invoice. And I'm like, that's you wouldn't like to be treated like that, so why treat somebody else like that? Um, I do think, and I do feel bad sometimes when you go into hospitality or industry, a bar, a restaurant, a coffee shop, and you can see it's new staff, it's young staff. You can see they probably haven't been trained well or at all. You can see they're under stress, they're under pressure, it's busy, and customers just being like mean and i'm like if that was your daughter or your son like you would absolutely lose the plot if you heard somebody speaking to them the way you just spoke to them like why do people think it's okay to shit on the staff member call for the manager at least that's hopefully what he's been trained to deal with or speak to the owner but don't take it out on the poor employee who's just trying to do their best yeah, I think working in hospitality, especially in those front-facing positions, it really does build a thick skin for sure, especially mm-hmm. if you are dealing with guests like that. But hopefully the business has some sort of protocol in place where staff are told that if a situation escalates, get a manager involved and get them to deal with it so they're not taking that all on themselves as well, or that is communicated. I remember working in a small town in Colorado, and there was one uh, restaurant that had been there for like forever. 
I'd say it was probably there as long as the town was there. <laughs> they almost had a wall of shame of people they had barred over the years, who some of them were neighbours, everyone knew everyone, but they just had a zero tolerance to you thinking it was okay to treat one of the employees like they were less important than you were. And they had no problem saying to people, that's okay, your meal's on us tonight, don't ever come back. Wow. No problems. And I remember being like, oh my God, sooner or later you run out of customers and they were like, better than to have people here who think they can treat employees like they're nothing. And I was like, wow, way to go. That's impressive. That's definitely something. What do you see from from your side, Sarah, as being some of the reasons why people should get into the hospitality industry, but also some of the reasons why people are hesitant to want to get into it? Uh, like I'm always about trying to f- help spread a bit of a spotlight, help share some insights for both sides, for the people who are thinking of getting into it, be realistic about what's going to be expected of you. Like it is a hard industry. It is long hours. It is bank holidays. It is weekends. It is late nights. No, you're not going to be off on a Saturday when your friends are going out to watch the match or going out to the beach. You're going to, you're going to be working. Like it's the high days. It's the holidays. Um, but there's a huge amount of benefits to working in the industry as well. I used to love... The fact I was off on a Tuesday and Wednesday. I was never busy in a restaurant. I could walk on a golf course and get a tea down whenever I wanted. You were never waiting in queues in line. Um, and then the same from the organization side. Like We're always trying to give them little tips and pointers as to if you could just do, I remember one year, something as simple as if you've just hired Sarah, could you please phone her the day before she's supposed to arrive, introduce yourself to her as the manager or the supervisor who's going to be meeting her tomorrow morning when she arrives for her first day and tell her whereabouts in the car park you're going to meet her so you can actually make sure she can park her car in the right place or you can walk in the front doors with her and actually take her around and show her, welcome to your new home. This is going to be home for the next while, especially in hospitality. And, And it was interesting the amount of organizations who started implementing going, like it was so simple to do but they just hadn't thought about it before. From somebody who's worked their way up through the industry, what are some of the things you would share with organizations and you would share with people? Yeah, I would say there's a lot of benefits and there are some cons to getting into hospitality as well. For the benefit side, I would say, especially if you're someone who likes to work on their feet or with their hands more so than sitting down at a desk, Um, I know for me, my first job was in customer service, which was for Dublin Bus, actually in Dublin, sitting down and answering customer complaints, which got me in towards hospitality. I actually realized I think I'm pretty good at this. I have a lot of patience and tolerance and don't get too affected by things. But sitting down at a computer caused me to fall asleep, literally fall asleep many times in the day and on the job. It was exhausting. And... Same thing in school. A lot of the times I would just fall asleep from sitting there. So I think it's great for that person who does like to be like a little more active in their job role and who likes to um, be up walking around, engaging with people, building um, relationships throughout the day with your coworkers. Your work, especially if you're working in a restaurant or anything like that, really can become your family and you most likely may be spending more time with your coworkers, with the people at work, than with your friends and family at home as well. So working in a place where there is a great quality of staff can be fantastic. It can feel like every day you're walking into a family to a bunch of friends. The downside can be if the quality of staff are not up to par or management as well. But for the most part, I think a lot of companies do a good job on hiring. And other benefits, I would say, is the opportunities that the doors open. I've been able to do so much from hospitality, from my time working in personal training or whether it was in restaurants. I was able to work in Ireland. I was able to work in the United States. If I wanted to go to Greece tomorrow and decide I wanted to go to Greece and travel for four months, I could walk into a job tomorrow. If I wanted to go to, honestly, any Spain, anywhere, I know that I can walk into a job now and just have one instantly. I think that's such a big benefit as well of working in the hospitality industry, as well as what you touched on earlier, the skills that you do learn with being able to handle with people. Um, 
And so th there's a lot of benefits. I would say also scheduling. So there are some negatives, which I will get into about work and holidays, etc. But there are some positives as well, it's especially if you have gone over to work in Florida or go over to work in Greece for a summer or wherever it might be, or if you're living in a nice sunny climate. One of the attractions for me at first, especially was if I don't have to work until 4 p.m. and I finish at 10 p.m., that means I have four to six or 10 hours in my morning available. I can go to the beach, I can lay by the pool, I can enjoy my whole day in the sun. Whereas a lot of people who work in offices don't see the sun. They're up and in the car on the way to work before the sun may rise or as it is and they're home as the sun is setting. So they're not getting hours out in the sun. Whereas if you're working in the hospitality, your hours may be a little different, but a lot of the time you do have more time in the day. Also more time available to run any errands or do any tasks because if you're working in an office, when are you going to be able to go to the bank or when are you going to be able to go shopping if the shop's all closed at six, anything like that. Because you are working a little bit of different hours to the general regular nine to five hours, you are able to fit a lot more in your day. So there's a lot of benefits. Now, I would say some of the downsides would be also the schedule because what if you want to go somewhere for Christmas with your family or if you want to go to a Halloween party or if you want to go to the fireworks on 4th of July or if you want to go down to the beach many weekends of the summer, that's when it's going to get, it's going to be a little different. Most likely you're going to be on a different schedule to a lot of your friends and family if they are working nine to five jobs and you may have to say no or you may not be able to be there for some of those events. Now, you can have the other days off and most likely you are going to have friends in hospitality to do things with on your days off too. But yeah, you can feel that sense of FOMO or sense of missing out for sure. I would say maybe some other negatives. We always find, I hear what you're saying about working, say, the Christmases and like the St. Stephen's Day or the St. Patrick's Days or the Valentine's Nights. To me, they used to be the best crack. We used to have such a good laugh when there was a big event on, when there was a big festival on, when there was a big party night happening, when there was you knew you were going to be absolutely full to the rafters because there was great energy, there was great atmosphere in the place. Um, and like every, I think everyone who works in hospitality, at the end of the day, definitely in your younger years, once you get through that busy day or night, you go out and party and you blow off steam with your workmates. Yeah. Um, I used to always think it's so difficult to have a relationship in your early years working in the hospitality industry because you are always not available the weekends, you're not available to go out in the evening time for a bite to eat, you're probably off on Tuesday or Wednesday when your partner is probably working or your boyfriend or girlfriend and you're getting lastminute.com to go into work and you're like, oh, sorry, I have to go to work again this afternoon. And so I always found like definitely the team you were working with, and again, in my 20s and 30s for sure, and as I was traveling around the place, that was your family. They were your friends. Like you didn't need a huge amount of other friends because you had probably 20, 30 teammates that you talk out with who were always a guaranteed a few of them off the same days as you and you did the same sort of things anyway. To me, like that was the trade-off too. It was like, yes, I probably lost some of my friendships from school, but now I've got friends all over the world who, yeah. like, whenever I get a moment or, like, when you come to visit and you get to go and spend a week or 10 days in various parts of the world and hang out and enjoy it. And it's, none of this would have existed if I hadn't gone into the hospitality industry and had that mind frame of, I have my passport and I'm willing to travel. Was, yeah, where am I going next? Yeah. And I think relationships can be hard, but they can be worked in as well. 100%. I mean, I suppose, look, the H2B program is probably a huge testament to that. The amount of people I meet every year who at some stage over, it could be two years, it could be five or six years on the H2B programs, they found long-term partners. Some of them got married and have kids. I'm like, who would have ever thought being part of recruitment for country clubs in America that you would now have all of these various people who invite you to their weddings and you're like... I remember the two of you when you went over. And it's, hey, we met, we fell in love, we're getting married, now we've got kids. And it's, wow, that's pretty cool as well. Yeah, put a bunch of people in the same place for 
eight months of working together and living together and it's likely to happen. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people sometimes don't realize about the hospitality industry. Uh, definitely the younger generations. And I go back to people who are in second level education, trying to start figuring out what am I going to do for a job? What am I going to do for my career? What am I going to do for life? And they think hospitality is the local bar or restaurant or coffee shop or pub or hotel. Um, I see that as being, that's my option. I was one of those people. Like I was working in the local hotel, then I was out in a bigger hotel. I had a bit of an idea about cruise lines, explored it, looked into it, but didn't really understand the long-term career goals or opportunities available in cruise lines. And the fact that, yes, your initial contract, you're going to be sharing a room, it's going to be tight quarters, you're going to be working flat out for four or five or six months. But as you climb that career ladder, it's actually a pretty good life. Like I know a lot of people who are now in senior positions in cruise line industries and like they have a great lifestyle. They have great quality life. They like partners on board for their four or five months that they're out at sea and their own cabins. I'm like, wow, that like that's they're pretty nice perks. And again, perks that would never be offered to you in the hotel industry. Now Okay, in some hotels, yes, definitely if you end up over in the United Arab Emirates, they do a pretty good job of making sure that they can attract top quality talent by making sure the package really is enticing and understanding that a lot of them are traveling with partners or wives or husbands and families. I look at the country club industry and I'm like, there's so many perks to work in the country clubs, like the salaries are insane when you start climbing that sort of career management ladder. Um, the fact that most clubs, especially if you're in the Florida clubs, it's eight months of busy, it's four months of, I won't say twiddling your thumbs, but it's four months of planning and getting organized for another eight month season. It's not a continuous 12 month slog. You've got your hotels, but you've also got your branded hotels. Like, again, I would look back and go me as a 20 year old sort of getting ready to graduate from my training. If I'd have known you could work for a Starwoods or work for a Westin or a Marriott and you could actually then potentially travel the world while still working with the same brand, while still developing, growing your career and be able to say, geez, like I've been in all these countries around the world, but I've constantly just grown and grown and my perks have grown pretty fab. I think it's something that I would love to see and we, we constantly try and work at from our point of view is educating those 15, 16 year olds. These are all of the various parts of the hospitality industry and they're all so different. Um, And just be aware of all the perks that go with the various options. Um, And again, like the opportunity to transfer in and out of them, like you can go from cruise lines to branded to non-branded to the United Arab Emirates, to the States, to Europe, to Asia, to country clubs, um, like it's such a huge industry um, that sometimes I think they need to come together more and educate the younger generations, the various parts of the industry, not always be so blinkers on, just focusing on what it is they do and they offer. Um, we're looking at the moment at, at an initiative we're trying to kick off between our country clubs and our hotel partners in Ireland to where we'll partner some clubs up with some hotels with some colleges and have that career development plan in place to where you can at 15 16 pick up a job with your local hotel during transition year during fifth and sixth year you can for argument say go to mtu and corp do your hotel management course if you want to you can come out and go to the country clubs and a j1 you can come out and go to the country clubs when you graduate in a h2b You can develop and grow your career at an international level, get that training and experience. You can come back to your local hotel back in Ireland in a senior management position or in a junior and grow up from there and have it to where they're almost sharing resources, sharing training, sharing culture between each other, as opposed to everyone just doing it for themselves and going, oh my God, it's just so much work to do on my own. Why not come together and share the workload? Yeah. So I think those partnerships are hugely important in the hospitality industry. I go back to my own journey. I would love to have had similar to a sports agent, somebody who was able to say, here's all the various options at 19 or 20. You're not going to know where you want to be at 45, 
but let's start maybe making sure that each step you make doesn't close the door to one part of these or one different organization or one different sector. Now, I know it was early days, but like I came home from the States after being GM of some bars and restaurants, turned over 36 million a year with teams of 56 or 60 people. And I was constantly overlooked and told, you're not qualified enough, qualified enough to be a food and beverage manager in a four-star hotel. I was like, are you off your rocker? The bars and restaurants we've set up from scratch and have built and operated are doing probably what your hotel is turning over. And I'm not qualified to run your food and beverage department. Um, and for me, that was a bit of a kick. It was like, what the hell? So yeah, I just sometimes wonder, do those 15, 16 year olds need somebody who can guide them as they take those steps in their career for that 10, 15, 20 years and make sure that they're taking the right steps at the right times and they don't potentially do something that sabotages an opportunity further down the road. Yeah, I, th- I think that's great. Great to educate and have those partnerships as times are changing. It's no longer the era that we spend 30 years working for one company. Many people are spending max two years in one place and in the hospitality. I know the turnover can even be as short as six months in a lot of places. So they have those opportunities where people can go from place to place while still progressing in their career and then also benefit the businesses in that way as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged sword for me here in Ireland at times. Like I'm trying to help educate hoteliers to the fact that why aren't you investing into some of your younger people and maybe giving them this opportunity if they wanted to go work with these country clubs to develop and grow their skills, to come back to you in a year or two or three years with more skills. Maybe they'll come back and they'll be trainers within your team and all of a sudden you're continually just building your own brand within the industry but you can either invest into them and show them that you're there for them because you want to help them grow and develop or you're just going to lose them to a recruiter who's going to find them on social media somewhere attract them and send them off anyway and then you're fighting a battle of now trying to figure out how do i get them back or even when are they available to come back um, and i just think it's it's foolish that at, at in this day and age organizations haven't realized young people want that opportunity to travel and they would much prefer that you're suggesting to them here's a really good way of doing it and we are actually the ones helping you achieve this and hopefully if you ever want to we'd love to have you come back and work with us again in the future it has to be a smarter way of building and developing your teams and constantly looking to try and attract new people all the time and we were lucky a couple of years ago actually we partnered up with our counterparts in Portugal and Italy who also recruit for our country clubs. And now we bring some people into a couple of clients here in Ireland like that. They spend a few years here and they get to develop their English skills, their language. They also get developed skills. And then they head over to the States for a couple of years. But it's amazing how many of them don't go because they've actually just really enjoyed working with the employer they're working with here in Ireland or some who do go when they're ready to come back, then they go, is there any opportunities back with that employer that I was with? Because I really enjoyed working with them. And I'm sure they'd be delighted to have you back. Um, but just be smart and start building relationships with organizations out there that are going to help you develop and grow your talent in your teams. Because you're either going to invest into them or you're going to lose them. One way or another, they're going to go and seek out the experiences they want in life. I'm sure, Sarah, if you went back to when you were first figuring out, okay, I'm going to transition into hospitality. If there had been an employer that you were working for who really opened up the doors for you to do this, if you ever were looking to return back home, you'd have been like, I want to go back to the employer who helped me secure this in the first place, not to somebody else that I have to start to build a relationship with and get to know. Yeah, definitely. I did come back after my three years and I did start working in Ireland again, I actually ended up working in a different restaurant and I did end up working in two different places. But if there was an opportunity for that door to be open and walk back into my old job, that would have been easier for me. I would have just went str- went straight in. And I did that for a year. And let me ask you this question, because uh, I'm curious. When you were on your H2Bs, how many seasons did you do, say, either up north with the summer clubs or back down in Florida? I did a total of six seasons. So I did the full three years 
on the HGB visas, where I did three winter seasons and three summer seasons. Did you return to the same club each summer season and winter season, or did you go to different? No, I went to six different clubs, and I know some clubs where at the time I realized starting to build partnerships with up north clubs and said they had a poster in their um, club saying these are four opportunities up north we're going to bring these clubs in these people are going to fly into our club to interview you to see if you would like to go to their club and then you can come back to us in winter so that was an option however there was only a couple of clubs usually that were offered and it was the first time I ever heard about being able to extend your H2B visa when I was actually in the country club already halfway through my season. So I thought, oh, I have to land this interview and they're only looking for people who are in the restaurant and I'm working at the fitness center. So I guess that's not me. I guess I can't get an extension. That's who I thought. And then I just done a quick Google search online and realized, oh, it's not just four clubs. I can do this myself. My club is not providing a place or they're saying that they don't have enough opportunities for us to go up north. I'm going to find my own. And that's what I did. I researched and when I was in Florida, I found there was this cute club up in Flagstaff, which was smaller and was more family orientated and had also opportunities still in the fitness area for me. I reached out to them and said, I want to work here. I already before I reached out to them, realized that they do work with H2Bs and went directly with them. Now, actually there was, I think there was eight of us from that club that went up there together. We made their job definitely easier for them hiring that year as they didn't even need a lot of staff and we found them. And then that's how I went from there. Looked at where I wanted to go next, saw what country clubs were in the area applied to those clubs, made sure that they did sponsor the, or did work with a H2B visa and um, went along with them. Yeah, there's definitely endless opportunities in the country clubs over there. Like I think there's 12,000 private member country clubs in the USA alone. So definitely always going to be opportunities for people. Um, and I always love hearing the stories of people who have had different experiences. Some people like to just return to the same club year after year, season after season. Other people are like, oh, I just want to just experience different parts of the States, different clubs, even different parts of Florida, and even just different clubs sometimes, because I'm sure you're aware, like some of the clubs, as you were saying, like in Flagstaff was a bit smaller, a bit more of a community vibe, it seems like. Some of the clubs are absolute monsters. Like they're just so big. You could be there with four of your friends and you might see them from one end of the week to the next. They're that big of a <laughs> And the only sort of tip I always try and give to people, especially who are going for their first H2B visa, is to just really make sure you get involved in the social channels that are all available. I was only speaking with one of our people yesterday who went and secured her own summer um, position with a club um, and left after a couple of weeks because basically a lot of what they promised isn't what was delivered and they were really only looking for the in-country extensions to come up for that month of September when they knew their own college kids would now be gone. And as she pointed out and said, so for June, July and August, what am I supposed to do for money if you're only giving me 12 hours a week? I can't survive in 12 hours a week and you're giving all the hours to the local college students, which I completely understand. They're local college kids for their every year. But like, why did you bring me up? And finally, HR admitted and said, because we need you in September when they're not here. Yeah. Her answer was, well, I won't be here in September either because I won't be able to afford to be here. So unfortunately, she had to leave and come home. Um, and now we're working on trying to secure her another opportunity to go back over again in October. So what are the different social platforms you have, Sarah? Because 100% people need to make sure they speak to people who've been there, done it, and ideally been at the club you're potentially looking at. And I know you've got a huge network there of people who can they can reach out and help them. Yes, my socials, YouTube is Live the Life You Desire, a lot of HTV content. I mentioned some of the places I've previously been as well. Facebook, that's where my biggest HTV community is. And that is HTV Visa Program to USA. That's a Facebook group. Over on Instagram as well, HTV Visa to USA. And then we do have our Transform and Hospitality platform as well over on Instagram. 
Facebook, LinkedIn, and I know, John, you have yours and your company also. Yeah, most of ours are just simply under the handle of only with B, but like I would 100% direct people to your Facebook and your Instagram um, channels. I've gone there myself sometimes just looking for information or insider, looking to see, can I find somebody to ask a question about a certain club that I know they've been at? Um, because for me as well, we're always trying to make sure we can vet a club before we potentially want to work with them to make sure the people who we're going to send over there and their lives here in Europe, that they're going to have a good experience. And so definitely your two channels, that social media one on Instagram and Facebook have been invaluable to me over the last five, six, seven years uh, as we've been navigating our way through it. So yeah, there's, there's endless opportunities. Um, for people once they're over there. You cannot go from outside of the USA into the USA just for the summer on a H2B. There is very few clubs will invest the money and the time and energy into securing a H2B for somebody to come for the summer months. Um, Ideally, you need to do a winter season first, which always is October through May, and that opens up the opportunities for summer clubs. So you're predominantly going to have to realistically do Florida, California for the winter, and then you get to go up to Rhode Island, New York, Boston, Martha's Vineyard, all the cool places that everyone's seen on movies and TV and wants to go to, they all only happen once you're already in country after your winter season. Um, the only other option is a J1, but then for that you have to already be in college studying and third level education. Yeah, I um- I think it is important that people know the quality of the club as well, which actually I think it would be really great to see if you've heard of Glassdoor, where people yeah. use. I'd love to see that in the H2B community, like a Glassdoor for H2B, or maybe that's something yeah. that we'll potentially work on. But I think that would be great for employees to look at or recruitment agencies or people who are sending people over to yeah. vet those places that they're going to go because... I know from my experience and others' experiences, some places have been amazing and living conditions have been awesome and some places have been a little bit more um, tricky to see there for the season as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that brings to the end of this um, topic and yeah. look forward yeah, I, to speaking to you in the next one. Yeah, for sure. I think we covered probably too much today. Uh, we might break this down into yeah. maybe two podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we tend to ramble sometimes when we get on a call. But uh, definitely, I think there's some good stuff here for people. Um, I definitely like your glass door idea. It's something we need to look at exploring and maybe we'll partner up and work on as well. Um, And yeah, I think we look forward to next week's edition. Um, So as usual, Sarah, if you can let them know where they can find the podcasts and appreciate your time. And always good to get to chat and catch up and everything to do with the hospitality industry, not just the H2Bs and J1s, but hospitality in general. Yeah, awesome. So uh, Transforming Hospitality is our podcast. You can find us at Spotify. We will be available on all other podcast platforms very shortly, as well as on YouTube. And guys and girls, people, please get involved, get engaged, leave us some feedback, leave us some comments. This is only new. We decided we wanted to do this to try and bring some value to the industry, to people, to organizations. Um, we just want to be supportive and try and help and share some good advice and some good tips and some hopefully lead to more people wanting to explore the hospitality industry for a career and so yeah we'd appreciate the feedback all right see you on the next one cheers sarah you too